Hello everyone. I'm still in the process of getting my dust collection system out here in the workshop finalized and I ran into a little bit of an issue with the blast gate that will be on the CNC router. This is a 6 inch aluminum blast gate and unfortunately the optimal placement for this is up near the ceiling since the drop kind of comes up and then goes down from the ceiling down into the CNC router. So this is going to be um, largely inaccessible for me. Boo hoo, that's a really great excuse for me to start using some pneumatics. Um, I've never really played around with pneumatics. So I got this pneumatic cylinder, um, the solenoid, and a few other pieces. And what I want to do is kind of cobble all this together and automate this so all of the control can be done directly in the G code itself. So let's get started. So this is a blast gate. For those of you not familiar with dust collection setups, it's really just a valve, if you will. It opens, allows air to go through, and then closes and prevents air from going through. In a perfect situation, you would have one of these at every tool, and you would only have the one open at the tool you're going to use to maximize the amount of airflow through that one tool. And since this is a larger six inch diameter port, I obviously want to be able to close this off when I'm not using the router and then open it during operations where I will be using the router. And my dust collector is uh, powerful enough to where I can collapse lines if I don't have any of these open. So having this automated is a really good idea because when you're setting up your workpiece on the CNC machine, you might forget to open the blast gate and then you can start collapsing some lines and having some other issues. So really all I need to do is figure out a way to take this vein and do this with it. So I'll be honest with you, I didn't actually start with pneumatics. I actually started with what I know, which is electronics and servos. So I actually made this whole jig that's all 3D printed. Servo motor would sit there, this gear would sit on top of it, and then you had this nice um, rack and um, pinion set up to where this would open and close the gate. The problem with this setup, well, the many problems with this setup is the gearing gets a little funky. Um, servos at best are usually only about 270 degrees. I do understand that you can extend that out, but there's just a lot of um, complexity to this. And then you also need a microcontroller to talk to this. And unfortunately, inherently, these pieces are pretty wobbly and floppy. I could have, you know, made these stronger, but it just really didn't work all that well. And it, it worked, but it really wasn't that elegant. So I saw a YouTuber, um, Jeremy Fielding, um, who actually did a really cool um, pneumatic system. So I thought, you know, this would be a good idea and try this out. So let's take a closer look at these pneumatics. And they're very simple and they're relatively inexpensive. And if you have some air, I think this is definitely the way to go for simple little tasks like this. This is a pneumatic cylinder. You put in air at this side, it extends out. You put in air at this other side, and it retracts. This is what's called a double acting cylinder, which means that it has these two valves. One goes out, one goes in. There are other types of cylinders, like a single acting, which have some kind of spring return or some other mechanism to make it go back to the standard or nominal position. These are actually relatively inexpensive. This one was about $20 off of Amazon, and it has a six inch stroke to it. So that is the length at which the plunger extends. The bore is the other thing that you want to pay attention to when getting one of these. The bore will ultimately dictate how much force or how much power it will have. The larger the diameter here, the more um, force that you can act onto the cylinder. As we know, this operates off of compressed air, which is PSI. So the greater the cross-sectional area that you're pushing against, the more force that you will have. If you're at all familiar with electric motors, um, there's some analogies here. If we think of this as a motor, the higher the voltage is, the faster it would move, and the more current that we provide it, the more force it would have. Well, in air, it's um, pretty similar. Here I have a regulator. You're all probably pretty familiar with these. These are normal on in a standard air compressor. And the amount of PSI, or the amount of pressure that goes into the cylinder, will ultimately determine 
how much force it has because PSI is pounds per square inch that acts on the plunger. The higher the PSI, the more force that this plunger is going to have. But how do we regulate the speed at which this plunger moves? Well, that's where these little flow control valves come in. These flow control valves don't necessarily impact the amount of force, but they impact how quickly that air can get into the cylinder. So these have like a little adjustable knob on top. We could use one of these on each of the inlet and the, um, well, I guess the this way and the that way ports or we could just use one going into the whole system. This essentially creates a valve that controls the flow going into the system. The pressure is the same, but the flow is regulated, so we get the same amount of force, but just at a slower rate. The solenoid is the last piece of the puzzle, and this is the thing that controls the actual air cylinder. This is a five slash two valve or a four way valve, either one, I didn't name them. You can see that there's one, two, three, four, five ports on this, and then we have a wire connecting to an AC outlet. These solenoids can be had in pretty much any voltage, like five, 12, 24, something like that. They come in all sorts of variations. I got the 110 volt version because I can plug this directly into my CNC controller. They consist of a few different little pieces. So we've got one inlet here, the air comes into this and it basically switches it in either of these directions. So the A and the B would go directly to the cylinder. So you would go into either the extend or the retract of the cylinder, boom, right out like that. And then we also have two exhaust ports over here because when this tube is filled with air, like let's say it's um, retracted right now, when this moves out, that air needs to go somewhere. So it goes out of these little filters. So when we go into here and this is actuated, it will extend the cylinder, making air flow into here, into here, into the cylinder. The air that was inside of here will then go back into this port and then out of the little filter. And then of course the process is the opposite when we go the other way. And by simply activating this, plugging it in, we will get one or the other. So it's really as simple as that. You also have a little button over here that you can press to manually operate this, and it doesn't actually even need to be plugged in to do this. And then this one has a cool feature to where you can kind of lock it into place to hold it in a location. And the last final thing that you might wanna know is this whole um, solenoid section comes off and you can orient it in different places depending on what you need. And then this just goes ahead and screws back on. So here is what the full setup looks like. We've got an airline coming in from a compressor that's over here. This comes into the regulator, which we can adjust. Um, let's adjust it down to 30 PSI and we can lock it in place. This goes then into the solenoid. One side goes out into a flow regulator into the top and the other goes into the bottom. And then this power cord would go off to the CNC controller, but we can just use the button for testing. So we've got 30, uh, let's see. We've got 30 PSI dialed in. Let's go ahead and hit the button. It extends, we let go, it retracts. And if you notice, if we jump this up to 60 PSI, the speed is about the same, but I can say that, I'm not gonna do that because that'll take my thumb off. Um, the power is a lot higher at 60 PSI. Um, 30 PSI is really about all we need. This is actually plenty of power right there. This isn't the greatest regulator in the world, by the way. So now let's talk about the flow regulators. Both of these are fully open. Let's go ahead and close one of these just a little bit and see what happens. I'm gonna give it a little bit more power. Let's close it a little bit more. <laughs> Here we go. So it goes out very slowly. And then we can further close that down. And then we can control each one of these independently to control the speed. And that's really all there is to it. So now that we have all the pneumatics sorted out, it's just a matter of 
getting this attached to it somehow and then hooking it up and testing it out. I did make one little modification to this blast gate because yeah, there's a little bit of play between this on the um, actual blast gate part. So let me show you what I did. So I added some foam adhesive strip to the inside of this and I'm going to go redo this because I didn't do that great of a job. I just had some of the 16th inch neoprene foam stripping that I put down and kind of trimmed it a little bit. The issue with this blast gate is it's X thick. I don't know exactly how thick it is, but there's a gap here and then there's a gap in the top casting. And because this is all just cast, there's quite a bit of play in here. So I had this little foam gasket so that the suction will be from this side and it will hopefully pull this against the gasket and hopefully form a pretty good seal. Now, because I added this extra thickness, you can see that there's six washers along here. That was just to increase the gap in between these two. So this still slid nicely in and out. Um, without those washers, this was very, very tight inside of there. So yeah, that's all I did. And here is the mounting solution that I came up with. Uh, this 3D printed part mounts directly to the edge of the blast gate and holds the cylinder. And then this is an arm that then attaches to the end of the plunger and actually attaches to the blast gate itself. Um, I have three brass heat set inserts in here and on the actual blast gate, itself, you can see that I have three drilled holes. And I actually inserted a screw into these and tightened it down a lot, and I actually got a little bit of a dimple on it so that the countersinks on the back side, uh, the heads of the screws on the back side, don't interfere with anything. So yeah, let's go ahead and assemble this. Um, the cylinder just kind of slides into this piece, just like that. It actually kind of snaps in nicely into that little piece slides in, it's retained by the nut. I decided to not hold the entirety of the cylinder, We're really only holding eh, maybe the first third or half or so. There's just no reason to hold the entire thing. Um, this is really all you need to hold, and then the zip ties here in the back are just for kind of holding it down. And um, I made these little zip tie channels in here, so the zip tie kind of goes around like that and it holds it from the underneath side like that and holds it nice and tight. And this is just to kind of uh, keep it in place a little bit and um, keep this from flopping around. So we're gonna do the other zip tie. There we go. And once we get this adjusted, we can tighten the nut on the end of it. And then all we have to do is attach that on there like that. Now, what's really interesting about this blast gate is all of these screws are actually 1032, which I thought was kind of interesting being that this is made in Taiwan. So um, I already had some hardware on hand. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the rest of this. To design these parts, I started with kind of a rough sketch or outline of the frame of the blast gate, where all the screw holes were located, where the actual um, holes or the ports were located. And then I just kind of built a part off of that, knowing the diameter of the cylinder and you know where everything needed to be positioned. Once I got the actual, I guess, adapter for the cylinder made, then it was just a matter of using another sketch on where the actual blast gate piece itself was. And then that's where I created the little arm from and made sure that everything lined up. So the sketches are all just kind of referenced off of each other and, you know, quote unquote, built around the actual sketch for the blast gate itself. A project like this really shows you how useful a 3D printer can be in your workshop. Both of these pieces are relatively simple, but would be pretty tricky to make otherwise. The plastic parts themselves are more than strong enough for what I'm trying to do, and it allows you to do some really interesting geometries, like you know the fact that the cylinder can just kind of click in place and be held by zip ties. Features like that are very difficult to replicate with uh, machining or welding or other things. So, you know, just something to think about. If you don't have a 3D printer for your shop yet, it is fantastic for making jigs and little parts like this. Let's go test it out. 
So here we are inside Mach 4. I have this set up on my um, tool cart just so you can get a better idea of what's going on. Um, I have some modifications to my screen set, so don't worry too much about that, but I have Dust Collector and Fog Buster. Um, those are my two coolant options. I have this, obviously, collect up to the Dust Collector, so I hit this button. Simple as that. And the other thing is you can use an M8 command, so I have M8. That will control it, and then if we do an M9, that will turn it off. So yeah, um, everything can be controlled throughout here. The actual dust collector itself will not be controlled through this interface uh, for various reasons. Eventually I might change that. I have um, little remote control fobs that I could probably integrate in with this. But for right now, really all I wanna do is control the dust or the blast gate because that is the thing that I just really don't have access to. So yeah, there you go, simple as that. And it is very fun to play with. So hopefully this gives you a little bit better understanding of pneumatics and what it takes to add your very own automated blast gate to your Avid CNC router. As always, thanks for watching. Check me out on Facebook for any updates to my channel and see you in the next video.